Thank you for joining us once again here on Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in studio with Mr. Patrick O'Connor. Mr. O'Connor is a VP and global franchise head at AstraZeneca, and he's joining us here on Health Professional Radio to talk about the Lung Ambition Alliance and their goal to double the five-year survival rate and to one day eliminate lung cancer altogether. Thank you for joining us here on the program, Patrick O'Connor. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Now, as a VP and Global Franchise Head, talk briefly about your role at AstraZeneca. Yes, so I'm the Global Franchise Head for our Tumor Drivers and Resistance um, uh, platform, uh, specifically focused uh, in oncology and uh, with, of course, a very, very special interest in lung cancer. Mm -hmm. And so that means that I get to lead a a global team of individuals um, who are sort of planning uh, clinical development of some of our assets and our medicines to target um, uh, specific diseases and then also commercialize those, um, of course, uh, around the world. We've all heard about lung cancer and and how devastating a a condition that it is. Um, How many people are are diagnosed? We're diagnosed just last year with lung cancer. And I I understand that you you have about five years of survivability after diagnosis. Is that correct? That's correct. You know, about two million people were diagnosed with lung cancer last year, and I think it, it's it's worth sort of taking pause and, and, and thinking about the disease of lung cancer. Um, uh, you know, despite the, the advances that we've seen over the last, say, 10 years in this disease, and there have been some really significant advances in the way that we can treat people um, with, with lung cancer, it still remains the leading cause of cancer-related death. Uh, about every 18 seconds around the world, somebody is dying from lung cancer. And largely one of the reasons for this is because um, when ca- lung cancer is diagnosed, it's typically in very late stages of disease, uh, at, you know, at a, at a time when uh, the cancer has spread, unfortunately, to other um, parts of, of the body. And um, for this reason, uh, only about one in five people who are diagnosed um, with lung cancer will be alive five years after that, fir- that first diagnosis. So, you know, I think that that's something that is uh, clearly not acceptable and, and, and we need to be passionately dissatisfied with that as a standard and, uh, and make sure that we're doing everything possible to uh, um, accelerate advances for people with lung cancer. So obviously, diagnosing it and detecting it much earlier would go a long way in, as you say, doubling the five-year survival rate. Absolutely, and you know, for this, what this is one of the reasons, or one of the the, the inspirations for forming the Lung Ambition Alliance. So, the, the Lung Ambition Alliance is a, is a, um, a partnership um, between academia, professional societies, diagnostics companies, pharmaceutical companies, and and, and patient advocacy uh, to really uh, work uh, on on three specific uh, aspects or three pillars, as you as you might call them, that we think are critically important to advancing um, uh, uh, the standards of care. And one of those, the first one actually is early screening and diagnosis. If you have um, a diagnosis in, say, stage one lung cancer, uh, the chances of you being um, alive uh, five years after that diagnosis are, you know, 80% and higher. Whereas if you're diagnosed, as I said, with um, metastatic disease, um, only only one in five people will be di- um, alive uh, at five years. So very clearly there's an opportunity for us to um, uh, enhance uh, the rate of screening, enhance the quality of screening, and enhance the uh, technologies that are used to screen lung cancer patients um, so that we can get more patients diagnosed in the early stage and, and, and therefore um, um, uh, what will follow will be an, an enhancement in survival. The second pillar that we are really focused on at the Lung Ambition Alliance is about delivering innovative medicines. There have been uh, you know, significant advances in, in the, the multiple sort of um, uh, call them segments or types of lung cancer that exist over the, over the last 10 years. And we need to make sure that we're, conti- we're continuing with the R&D effort and that when these uh, um, new medicines are, are available and these new uh, innovations are, are, are made, uh, that, that patients with lung cancer actually um, have access to these medicines. And then last but not least, um, we need to enhance the quality of care uh, for patients around the world. There's a lot of great work that happens uh, through patient advocacy groups uh, around the world at, uh, at medical institutions. But unfortunately, standards of care in you know, country X versus country Y are not uh, necessarily consistent and the same. And we need to make sure um, that uh, the innovations that exist, say, in, say right here in the U.S., uh, you know, can be delivered to other parts of, uh, of the world as well. 
There are going to be some major projects that are going to be benefited by the alliance. Could you talk about some of these projects that are involved in these in these three tiers, as you say, of um, advancement? Yeah, sure. So, so one of those, um, I'll actually start with the um, that that third pillar first, enhancing the quality of care. You know, a lot of um, a lot of great work happens at, at the uh, on the ground. You know, if you want to really make an impact for patients and the quality of care that they that they receive, you've got to do this on a local level with um, uh, with a community and academic institutions that are that are right there and surrounding the patients. And for that reason, we are we will be launching this year um, at the World uh, Conference of Lung Cancer a new initiative called um, Initiatives in Lung Cancer Care, which essentially will be a um, an opportunity for patient advocacy groups around the world to apply for funding um, for um, projects that are, would be local to their specific situation that are going to help them to help patients in their countries with lung cancer care. You know, very often times these groups are um, quite small, um, very underfunded. They have um, teams of, of, of passionate people who want to do great things for, uh, um, for, for their communities, um, but they just don't have the, uh, the, the means. And what we want to do is to provide uh, an avenue for, um, to enable that and to uh, share the best practices of the great work that can happen there and really sort of uh, make sure that we can um, uh, share that with other, other countries and other um, advocacy groups around the world. So that, that's um, sort of one concrete initiative that we're very proud that we'll be launching uh, later this year and uh, you know, requesting um, uh, it, uh, organizations to make proposals. Um, on the other side of the coin, when it comes to screening and early diagnosis, and uh, we have a project called uh, ELEC, which stands for the um, Early, Early Lung Imaging Confederation. And essentially, how you can think of this is this is a new cloud-based screening registry, um, which will enable us to, to link um, uh, academic medical institutions around the world and create a um, essentially a database of lung cancer screens, a database of of of, um, of um, a biological material and a database of patient records, which will be a fantastic learning tool to do, to do a few things. Um, the first, it will help us to create um, quality standards for lung cancer screening so that uh, when patients are um, going to be screened for lung cancer, we can be sure that you know, they're getting the right results. Um, to refine the technologies that, that are being used and perhaps test new technologies. So imagine um, moving away from uh, low-dose uh, CT screening, which is the standard today, and, and perhaps enabling blood-based Testing. I mean, I think what we have to uh, imagine is a world one day where uh, lung cancer screening is as commonplace as, as, as breast cancer screening or, or, uh, or prostate cancer screening, um, that it's as simple as perhaps going for a medical and having a blood draw at the same time as you're getting your cholesterol checked. And then that result can tell you, you, you know, you have cancer, you have lung cancer, you have a certain sub, subtype of cancer. That when that diagnosis is made, there are um, great innovations and we can deliver right, the right medicine to the right patients at the right time. And then last but not least, uh, once, that, once a person with lung cancer has received treatment, the quality of the care that surrounds that patient, whether it be understanding how to plan for your and your uh, family's financial future, whether it's about you know, maybe uh, managing adverse events um, uh, or associated with your medication or you know, other, other um, services and, uh, um, uh, and needs are, are, are well met. You know, that's the world that we should be looking for, and if we can do that, we'll double five-year survival by 2025 and, and hopefully one day um, eliminate lung cancer as a cause of death. Where can our listeners go and get some more information about the Alliance? Sure. So um, you can go to uh, our website. So that's um, lungambitionalliance.org, www.lungambitionalliance, is all one word, .org. Um, there you'll find out more about um, our projects, about our three pillars, so early screening and diagnosis, delivering innovative medicines and enhancing the quality of, of patient care. Um, and uh, you, you, you can get involved. So, you know, we, we're looking for more partners. The whole spirit or inspiration of the Lung Ambition Alliance that if you want to go fast, and we have been going fast in lung cancer, you go alone. But if you want to go far, you go together. And it's only by bringing together these partners, which at the moment is AstraZeneca, it's the IASLC, which is the leading um, um, professional society in lung cancer, GLCC, which is the Global Lung Cancer Co Coalition. Um, this is a patient advocacy group or a coalition of patient advocacy groups around the world, and Gardens Healthcare, who are a blood-based diagnostics company. You know, we're looking for 
for, for new partners all the time because it's only by working together within this community that we can really uh, advance uh, for people with lung cancer. Patrick, thank you so much for joining us on the program this morning. Thank you. Thank you for your time. And um, um, yeah, have a good day. You as well. You as well. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, listen in and download at SoundCloud and be sure and visit our YouTube channel at youtube.com.